Hey, it's the preacher. And today, well, actually tomorrow, we're going to barbecue a coon, but the process starts today. I have trapped a large size coon and a medium sized possum in a box trap. I quickly and humanely dispatched them and they have now been skinned. I have a foot left on the coon and a foot left on the possum. And that's so you know and can verify that I am cooking what I said I'm going to cook. What we're going to do today is get these soaking in a brine of salt water and ice in an ice chest. I'll show you how to do that. Tomorrow we will boil them after 24 hours of being in the brine. We'll boil them and then we'll barbecue them. I'm going to bring you along. And remember, you can do this with a possum or a coon, but if you do it with a male coon, it comes with its own toothpick. We're going to make a brine. Now, I don't have enough room in my fridge for a large coon and a medium possum so what i do have is an ice chest and i've got a pretty good layer of ice on bottom and here i have a cup and a half of salt with a quarter or three quarters of a cup of sugar on the top so that's two cups total i'm going to put that all over the possum and the coon and i'm going to start this i'm going to start this filling up Now, I know what some smart aleck's going to ask. Preacher, what's the ratio of salt and sugar to water? Uh, I don't know. Just put salt and sugar in there and cover it with water and see what happens. Golly, that is cold. That's what it should look like. Put the lid on it. Check it in 10 or 12 hours. Make sure you still got ice. Putting salt in that water and that ice, it just makes things cold. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I just know from experience. You put salt water and ice together and man, it gets cold. Now, if you got a Yeti, you want to spend $450, don't check your ice. But if you want to spend $19.95, save your $300 and $72 or whatever that math works out. If you want to do that, then uh, go check your ice in 12 hours. Good morning, YouTube. Look out, champ. That's hot. Good morning, YouTube. It's time for step two in the Barbecue the Coon series. What we're going to do this morning, we yesterday step one was put it in a brine. Here's what it looks like. It has been soaking in that salt water mixture for just shy of 25 hours, 24 hours. What I have over there is a, um, a large stock pot on a propane burner, and I'm going to fold that coon up and put him inside that pot. And we're going to boil him and fully cook him in the pot so that when we barbecue him, we're just adding our flavors then. All right. Step two is underway, boiling the coon. We're going to let him boil for probably an hour or two until the meat is just about to fall off the bone. It's been two hours. Let's have a look at it. Woo-wee, that's looking good. I did come back and add uh, half an onion sliced and, uh, I don't know, some celery. I don't remember how much. A handful. It's just starting to pull apart and pull away from the bone. That's the sound of freedom right there. All right, we got our coon out of the pot. It has been boiling. As you can see, I can start to pull the legs apart. It's just about to fall apart, but not falling apart. And that's where you want it. Now it's time to season it up and put it on the smoker. We got the charcoal lighting. We're going to put some oak logs on it. But first thing we're going to do is put some seasoning on it. 
Now I have some leftover rub that I used a while back. I'm going to put some of that on it. I've got some uh, ground cumin, some chili powder, some paprika, and this is some barbecue sauce. This was originally, I think, Big Bob Gibson's regular sauce. I don't know, I think you can improve on it, but I added some, uh, some cayenne pepper, some smoked jalapenos, and some apple cider vinegar just to thin it up and give it a different taste. We'll coat it with that. Now what I do is I open up all the shakers before I get started. And I cover these shakers because uh, I'm going to get grease on my hands once I start rubbing it on. So I'm going to use my left hand. Let me get all these over here. I'm going to use my left hand to handle the sauce and the shakers. And I'm going to use my right hand to rub it in, rub it in. All right. Now, if you do not have this right here, Ozark Spirit Shaky Sauce. If you don't have this, sell your children uh, into slavery. Whatever you got to do, do it and find yourself some Ozark Spirit Shaky Spice Blend. Now, the reason you need to do that is because the only place you can get it is from Ozark Spirit. And uh, he blessed me with a bottle of it, and it's wonderful. And I don't know how else you can get it, but I'm going to... Uh, Put this liberally all over this coon. I'm going to get some on the inside, the outside, all sides of the coon. This stuff is delicious. I got some of this leftover rub of mine. I'm going to put it on there. This coon ought to be good. We corn fed it for days. All right, now that I've got a pretty good, well, I missed a spot right there. You go sparingly with, sparingly with Ozark Spirit rub because you can only get that in one place in Ozarks. I know the guy that makes it. Now that it's covered and everything's there, I'm going to use that, that uh, hopped up Bob Gibson sauce and I'm going to just rub that in. That'll help lock in all the rub that I put on there and give this, give this coon a nice barbecued flavor. That, that coon never had his back rub like that before, I'll bet you that much. I think he's ready for the smoker. Let's get our fire ready and we'll put him on. Okay, it's just after 12 o'clock. I just set the coon on there and I, I put him neck towards the front. That's just the way he fit. I put him on his side. That way if he started to break down and collapse, he'd collapse on himself and not back behind my smoker. My smoker's kind of homemade, shifty. And I put five pounds Arkansas round steak on there. And, uh, I mean, if you're going to smoke a coon, you might as well smoke five pounds of bologna. We're going to have a hayride and a bonfire and a cookout at our house tonight for the church. And there's going to be a lot of them that will not eat that coon. But they'll eat the lips and rear ends off a horse in this bologna. So, you know, to each his own. I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor to all kinds, and I try to have a little bit for each. And I'll have a bunch of hot dogs for the kids. We're even going to cook up some deer meat. So, uh, anyways, we'll come back whenever I think that's done. Maybe an hour or two. We'll look at it. Let's have a look at the coon. The coon's been in here about an hour and a half. I added charcoal one time. Uh, my oak log, my little oak log is burned up. About an hour into it, I spun it around butt first. Because this looked like it was kind of drying out. That Arkansas round steak looks good. See how you just take that leg and pull it apart? That's when you know meat's about right. I'll tell you what. Man, that's good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now I'm going to take that inside and let it rest. And let it cool completely down. Then we're going to pull it apart. And uh, we'll, add some, we'll add some barbecue sauce if we need to. But we'll get it inside. All right, there's our coon fully cooled down and ready to be 
picked, pulled apart. I'm going to pull everything apart and put it in this foil pan right here. So the first thing I want to do is pick it up, set it over here on the cutting board. And I'm just going to begin the process of pulling this leg bone off here. You see all that meat there coming off with it? I'm going to try to separate some of the fat, but for the most part, I just want chunks of meat in the pan. Just like that. We're going to have a buffet line and uh, people will just be coming by. I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll just put it all here. That way we can kind of get an idea. I'll put the bones back on there. That way we can kind of get an idea of how much meat it made. And you see it all laid out there. So basically this is me doing a front leg here. You got to be careful on the front leg. Because down here toward the bottom they have, looks like three bones. And I cut them with a set of snips when I cut the paws off. So I want to make sure I don't pull out a, a piece of bone. Get a piece of bone. Nobody wants to bite into a bone. I know I don't. All right, there's the front leg down. Let's try a back leg. It's like a big ham here. Fat, if I see it, I'm going to throw it out. If I don't see it, it's going to make it in there. But Obviously, nobody wants to eat a big hunk of fat, so I'm going to pull those off. And I'm going to be honest with you, I sampled a little piece of this when I pulled it off the smoker before it cooled off. It is excellent. I, I'm really surprised. I've never ate coon before. I've never cooked coon before. Matter of fact, I probably need to thank my insurance, my old insurance agent at the church, Tim. He told me that he used to go duck hunting uh, down in uh, around Duvall's Bluff, I think, Stuttgart. Pine Bluff, Duvall Bluff, somewhere down in there, I don't remember. Anyways, he said he, he would go to a duck camp down there and they always barbecued coon. He was telling me how good it was, which I had heard that it was very good. I just never, I mean, I coon hunted growing up, but we never ate coon. There's quite a bit of meat on this ham. Okay, I've got half of it stripped. There's no sense in you watching me do all this. I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera back on after I get it all done. We'll put it in a pan and add some sauce. Okay, there's what you get when you're done. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is squirt some of this uh, sauce over it. Remember, this is Big Bob Gibson's from Decatur, Alabama. I don't think I made it any better, but I made it different. So I'm going to put enough of that on there to keep it moist and from drying out. And uh, I'm going to stick it in the oven or in the smoker just to keep it warm until I get here. Because one thing I've learned about coon, it's better warm. So put some foil on it, wrap it tight. Get it good and tight like that. Because see, when your guests come over, you want them to unwrap coon like they're unwrapping a Christmas present on Christmas morning. So wrap that tight. Don't tell them what it is. And when they take that foil off, it'll be like when they got their first BB gun. So anyways, that's how I barbecue coon. It turned out good for me. You give it a try. Don't knock it till you try it. And thanks for watching. Well, not many takers on the possum, but they love the raccoon.